Okay, my friends, it's Roger again. This is going to be a trip. <laughs> Greg, my very good friend, Greg Morrison, who is the feathered serpent guy on the East Coast, has gone out and actually picked up a feathered serpent feathers, and I have analyzed them, and I have some here somewhere. I have them all over the place. He sent me a bunch of stuff. Now, so we, we are talking about you know, our ultimate end, because we're all going to die, case closed. I know everybody's worried about corona, and I am too, obviously, but this is just another day of getting closer to dying, and for me, I'm at that end of, of life stage, so I'm looking at things like, you know, dragon details and stuff like this, which, which is the things that we're looking at, which we're talking about in the past, that have been ignored and, and really crushed. By who? By what? For what reason? But anyway, See, here I go again. I, I start running off about this stuff. I just did a video. It's about five hours long. And the reason I'm doing this is because I don't know how long the other video is. It's very, very long. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't finished it up yet. But it turned into a rant because everything, it turns into a rant with me. There's so many things wrong. Even... Even NASA, you know, everybody says, oh, NASA, they're all, they, you can't believe anything. Well, they're correct. <laughs> you can't believe anything from them. They don't know what they're doing. And they say, oh, you're so critical, Roger. You're just such a mean, nasty guy. No, I'm not. It's true. Now, the reason I'm saying this, <laughs> he sends me this thing about the final days. And I, so I go in here and I look at this. And this is final days. There's a big thing approaching us, right? So I'm looking at this. And, and she's got some good points. Uh, however, it is, it, this is lens flare. And, and I can, I can testify to that pretty much. And I'll show you why I say it. Now, uh, again, this was from Greg and with all good intentions, we'll take a look at this, see what it is. And I can tell you it's, here's the, here's the deal. Let's go out to, um, <clears throat> NASA. This is what gives me, this is what drives me crazy. Look at this. Let's go back to the beginning of the sun. Because I, I start at the beginning of everything. I said, what about the sun? L let me know all about the sun. You know, they say it's a big fusion factory and it all makes fusion inside. No, it doesn't. None of this stuff is right. Not a single word. I mean, and you, oh, Roger, you're just a nasty guy. No, I'm not. You tell me if I'm wrong. And they got all the money to do this stuff. This is what gets me crazy. Oh, our sun is surrounded by a jacket of gases and they go on about the corona. Well, it's the outermost part of the sun. It's way out here. Well, guess what? On the sun, it's 6,000 degrees. Out here, it's millions. Now, and then they say it's a fusion factory and all this business. Well, I looked through it. Why is the corona so dim? Well, it's all gases. It's not the planet. And then you see all these magnetic loops. What's going on there? Then they come down. They say the corona, the corona's high temperatures, millions of degrees, are a bit of a mystery. Total mystery to them. Imagine that you're sitting next to a campfire. It's nice and warm. It's toasty. It's rays coming on you. But you walk away from the fire, you feel cooler normally. This is opposite of what happens to the sun. You get further away, it gets hotter. Astronomers have been trying to solve this terrible mystery for a long time. <laughs> the corona is is in the outer layer of the sun's atmosphere. Oh, man, this is hilarious. Wait, you see what it is. It's just... I can't believe it. <laughs> the corona is in the outer layer of the sun's atmosphere, far from its surface. Way out there, millions of degrees. Yet the corona is hundreds of times hotter than the sun's surface. Total mystery. <laughs> All right, so I send Greg back this picture. Look, this is a solar eclipse. <laughs> Whoops. The hell is that? <laughs> All right, this is a solar eclipse. Now let's take a real close look at that. This is spinning. They say it spins once every 27 days. I don't believe that whatsoever. This is spinning. Well, let's say it spins once every 27 days. I don't care. If it's 27 times as big as the Earth, good. Now, you see that red spot, red spot, red spot? And then you see over here, like, you see a glowy look to it, but it's, it's, it's not red. Well, red means it's more excited. That's because it's turning to the right, spinning this way, forcing the atmosphere that surrounds the sun 
to crash through the atmosphere that it's plowing through. It's so obvious that a two-year-old would see this. Well, maybe ten. Spinning at the same time. Scrubbing here, turning red here, not turning red over here because it's spinning away at that point. This is crushing in, forcing, making red, doing all of that stuff you can see. Here is the poles. These are the poles. This is this up here. It's just barely moving. Here it's going. And this here is just nothing. That's why you get your poles going up through here. This is nothing more than electric current. Electric current, just like a generator and a motor. A motor spins inside of a box of magnets. And those magnets force that motor to keep turning and forcing it to keep cre creating energy and forcing it to flow through its poles. Gravity is nothing more than magnetic attraction to the surface to flow through the poles. Uh, science is all over as far as I'm concerned. I'm done with it. You know, th th to have these people trying to teach us about life, you know, not just this. This is just another thing that they're just wrong about. It's just unbelievable. And they're trying to teach us that evolution is the way. We're all going to turn into dead dust. So who cares what you do while you're alive? Well, good for you, you scientists with your evolution and your dead dust theories. Good, good for you. I'm going with the true stories of the, the story of God. God programmed every single thing that's here, every single molecule. He said, here's how you're going to react when you're in this particular situation. We have changed the rules. That's the problem. You know, you can outsmart things a little bit, but, by, you know, sooner or later they're going to come back and bite you, and we are being bit. And this corona thing is just another big chunk out of the bites. We need to get back to nature, get rid of this GMO foods and all of that crap that they're putting on the things that we eat. It's glyphosate, mimics glycine or glycerol or whatever those chemicals are that the GLY chemicals. And glyso glyphosate is what they spray on the foods we eat. And some of it they spray right at harvest time because it makes it dry out better. You know, somebody's got to do a little more research on these things before they start... And, and Stephanie Seneff, that's the woman, I, I really appreciate her work. She's the one that really they should turn this whole thing over and say, you, you control it, you make the rules. Because I'm telling you, nobody else is... is uh, I, I'm sorry. Anyway, <clears throat> I am getting kind of nasty. <laughs> I get a lot of people saying that lately. And it's, I got... I'm trying not to. All right, I love you all. And God bless you.